God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Today the Holy Spirit has inspired me to preach about the deceptions of the evil one. Where in there are eight different passages in the New Testament Saint Paul is writing do not be deceived. This is what we are going to see. There are eight times he has said there are also more times which we will see later but today we will see these eight ways that evil is cheating us deceiving us deceiving means we do not know that whether we have been deceived but it's only after it has been happened even right now as you listen to me maybe you are under this trap under the trick of the evil one that's why you have always mentioned to you that the devil never comes with two big horns and with a tail he never comes like that he comes in the form of an angel that's why we get deceived he never comes to test us in the form of anything that is fearful or frightening let's go through these passages first we'll go through these eight passages the first one is 1 corinthians 3:18 we can all read together with me 1 corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 1 corinthians 3:18 do not 1 corinthians 1 corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 do not deceive yourself if you think that you are wise in this age you should become fools so that you may become wise let's read this word of god once again do not deceive yourself if you think that you are wise in this age you should become fools so that you may become wise this is the first deception if anyone is thinking you are wise enough you are intelligent enough to survive to overcome this world and the the things of this world we are deceived then the second one is 1 corinthians chapter 6 9 and 10 1 corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 do you not know that wrong doers will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived fornicators idolaters adulterers male prostitutes sodomites thieves the greedy drunkards revilers robbers none of these will inherit the kingdom of god what is this second type of deception do not be deceived do you not know that wrong doers will not inherit the kingdom of god and the scripture is telling fornicators idolaters adulterers male prostitutes sodomites thieves greedy drunkards revilers robbers do you fall in any of these category like fornication idolatry that's love of money adultery or male prostitution sodomites thieves stealing things greedy drinking alcohol alcoholism revilers robbers do not be deceived that means what wrong doers for example saint paul is teaching whom the christians the jewish people who are the converted people and why the jewish people they take that whatever way we live it will be okay see i am a priest just because i am a priest i heaven is not guaranteed i need to change my life i need to be converted every day just because i am a christian i cannot do any wrong doing and take things for granted there are many who are baptized non christians they are baptized but they are not christians in their heart they are circumcised not in their actions they are just physically not internally then the third deception this is 1 corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 33 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 together let's read do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals do not be deceived 
bad company ruins good morals see this is another deception if you think that you can mix with anyone you can talk with anyone you can party with anyone and you think there is nothing scripture says do not be deceived are you deceived by your friends by wrong ideologies wrong teachings wrong churches wrong pastors wrong uh, leaders wrong politicians bad company ruins good morals do not be deceived that means you are already deceived then the fourth one is galatians chapter 6 verse 3 galatians chapter 6 verse 3 my friends if for if those who are nothing think they are something they deceive themselves for if those are nothing think they are something they deceive themselves actually what's our identity from dust we came to dust we return so if we boast about anything else it's a deception corona taught us we are nothing and we have no one in the moment of crisis so for if those who are nothing think they are something they deceive themselves saint catherine of siena teaching about self knowledge to know your identity who you are if somebody is asking you who you are what's your identity you have to know that your identity is only that you belong to god there is nothing else and if we think that we are someone that we are rich we have influence we have a job we have we have a position remember all these adjectives will depart from us the day we die then the fourth uh, then the fifth one is galatians chapter 6 verse 3 galatians chapter 6 verse 3 this is the fourth one galatians chapter 6 verse 3 okay for if uh, it is the same then uh, the uh, fifth one fifth one sorry galatians 6 7 and 8 galatians 6 7 and 8 do not be deceived together let's read do not be deceived god is not mocked for you reap whatever you sow if you sow to your own flesh you will reap corruption from the flesh but if you sow to the spirit you will reap eternal life from the spirit do not be deceived the lord has clearly and categorically said a good tree will never produce a bad fruit and a bad tree will never produce a good fruit you cannot keep on shaking an orange tree and demand apples an orange tree can only produce orange an apple tree can only produce apple a mango tree can only produce mango do not be deceived god is not mocked for you reap whatever you sow this is the sixth one then the seventh uh, uh, the fifth one the sixth one is james chapter 1 22 james 1 from 22 james 122 together but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves that means if we only hear the word of god and we never put it into practice we never do the word that we hear we deceive ourselves this is a deception when we just hear we attend all the retreats but we don't change our character we are so much into this live stream but we don't behave well with our life partner and children we deceive ourselves that means the word that we hear should take flesh inside us then the seventh one is james 126 james chapter 1 was 26 if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts their religion is worthless that means 
if you say you are a prayerful person but you don't control your tongue you have no control over your tongue that means you are already deceived if you don't know how to control your tongue you are deceived by the evil one this is the seventh one and the eighth one is 1 john 1:8 1 john 1:8 if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if anyone is thinking i have no sin i, I am i'm not a sinner we are have deceived because even a even a just man falls seven times a day the scripture teaches then what about us that means if anyone is thinking no i i am not that one i am not that type i'm different i'm not gossiping i'm not drinking alcohol if anyone is thinking i do not have a sin they deceive themselves this is the word of god so we are just the holy spirit wanted to teach us the way the evil one is deceiving us we have seen eight ways through saint paul means the letter of saint paul then also a letter to the james and one john uh, the john the apostle is also teaching in the new testament that the ways that the devil is cleverly deceiving us we go back to the first deception that the devil is doing the first one is 1 corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 1 corinthians 3 18 we have to go a little deeper into this word of god do not deceive yourselves if you think that you are wise in this age you should become fools so that you may become wise sisters and brothers that's why i have mentioned to you earlier we if we look at this world the world will show you what is the right as wrong and wrong as right it's just as if we are looking into a mirror if you look at a mirror your left will be shown as the right and your right side will be shown as the left side this is the same way that if you look at this world if you want to learn from this world this world will deceive you and if you if you think that you know the things of this world you know about science you know things about this world sisters and brothers we deceive ourselves let's read this word of god now this is from uh, 1 corinthians chapter 1 was 28 1 corinthians 128 because the the selection of god himself god chose what is low and despised in the world things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are see if we say that we are intelligent we are wise in this world we will not have answers for many things many sufferings if you are wise in this world saint there there the, there is an incident happened in the life of saint therese of child jesus it was after saint therese joined the convent after three months it was found that her dad was louis martin he was found to be mentally sick so saint little therese was so confused what to do because she wanted to become a religious nun but now her dad back at home became mentally sick so if she continues to be a nun then who will look after her dad and his health and she was so much attached to the dad now another question if god has really chosen me why did my dad became mentally sick sisters and brothers there are too many questions that was that in a way torment her because we know if somebody is falling mentally sick at our home <clears throat> talking intelligently or thinking wise you may immediately think it's a problem it's a genetic problem you we may start inquiring about our family tree what is going on in the family tree there is something has gone wrong some mischievous sin has happened little theres did not do anything because she believed in god she continued and became a nun and we know the church declared this mentally sick louis martin a saint he is a he is a patron of families along with his wife they are declared to be a saint and the church declared mental sickness can only affect the mind but his soul is still holy and safe and he is saved 
That's why let's read once again. This is 1 Corinthians 3, 8. If you are trying to think everything intelligently with your head, you will be deceived. The one who, 1 Corinthians 3, 18. 1 Corinthians 3, 18. Those who do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise, sisters and brothers. You will not understand many things related to God. It's only when you accept God is a mystery that your small brain cannot contain the mystery of suffering, the mystery of your struggle that you're going through, that there is a purpose behind it so he wants us to make ourselves humble even why did God choose the people of Israel Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 7 is not because they had everything they were highly intelligent we read it together it was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you for you were the fewest of all peoples. That means you need to know that if God is giving you any favor, any blessing, it's not because of your merit and it's not on the worldly category. He chooses the despised, the rejected, the lonely, the least, the lost and the weakest. If you look, if you think you are wise, you will not get divine revelation divine inspirations look at these apostles who were they they were not, they were fishermen that is the way god chose them who was faustina she did not know even she just knew how to read and write nothing more that's why we read in this is gospel of matthew chapter 11 verse 25 that's why god hides at that time jesus said i thank you father Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. If you think that you are wise, you deceive yourself. Because I always thought, why God chose Faustina? She was only class three. Because she never questioned. She was childlike. She never questioned. Whatever she heard from, the, from God, she just copied it. She was just like a photocopy machine without questioning, without arguing. That's why we got such a profound Christian classic, the diary of Faustina. The, the best selling book in this modern age of spirituality. And you know everything that's written in this book is of wisdom. Revealed to somebody who considered herself as a fool. That's why God chose her. Do you think you are not getting the inspiration of God? God is not talking to you. You want God's direction? Make yourself as a child. Child-like mentality will give you God's inspiration. Devil is a deceiver. He will just tell you, no, you are wise, you are intelligent. You don't want anyone's advice. You have to think. You have to use your brain. They will repeatedly say, but God speaks to the heart, not to the brain. This is the first deception. If we have a tendency of not listening to anyone, maybe you're a little child, you don't want to listen, you don't want to take any advice, you don't want to pray, that means you are in deception. That means you consider yourself as wise. That's why in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 30, we read, the word of God clearly says, no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. Saint Paul has clearly written, whatever he got is not through intelligence or knowledge, but through revelation. God reveals his secrets in revelation. So let's surrender our intelligence, our brain at the feet of the Lord so that God will enlighten us and give us profound wisdom. Let's pray so that we, we are not deceived through human wisdom, human understanding and counsel. Then the second one is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Just because we are baptized 
do we think that we will possess the kingdom of god just because we are christians do we think that we will inherit the kingdom of god let's read this word of god this is in the book of deuteronomy chapter 29 18 and 19 deuteronomy 29 from 18 let's read this word of god it's very important deuteronomy chapter 29 18 and 19 it may be that there is among you a man or woman or a family or tribe whose heart is already turning away from the lord our god to serve the gods of those nations it may be that there is among you a root sprouting poisonous and bitter growth who hear the words of this oath and bless themselves thinking in their hearts we are safe even though we go our own stubborn ways if anyone thinks we continue if we go on our own stubborn ways thus bringing disaster on moist and dry alike that means let's read verse 19 see this is the wrong doing was 19 we 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 read all who hear the words of this oath that means all those who read and listen to the word of god and bless themselves thinking in their hearts we are safe even though we go on our own stubborn ways do we simply think oh it's okay i'm like this i will be like this i will not obey anyone this is my conviction i will not go for sunday mass i will not go for confession i don't want to attend the holy mass i don't want to join the prayer group i'm safe we are safe even though we go our own stubborn ways if here anybody who is an alcoholic drinking alcohol and you you disturb your wife you disturb your children and you think no i will go on drinking because this is my money this is my body this is my hard work and i do whatever i want if anyone who is watching pornography and saying this is my life and this is my pleasure and what will happen disaster can come upon us and we just take things god for just lightly we read then was 20 what will happen with this the lord will be unwilling to pardon them the lord will be unwilling to pardon them let's go to now two chronicles chapter 36 from 13 how did the people of israel who were mightly chosen by god went to babylon captivity two chronicles chapter 36 was 13 Two Chronicles thirty six thirteen. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. He stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord, the God of Israel. He did not return to God. He did not repent. Again, from fifteen and sixteen, same chapter, chapter thirty six, fifteen and sixteen. Let's read. it all resembles our life the times of this this day the lord the god of their ancestors sent persistently to them by his messengers because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place that means the lord is repeatedly sending his priests these days it is the priests and the the lay ministers the evangelists the the lord continuously sent but we read verse 16 but what do people do these days but they kept mocking the messengers of god despising his words and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the lord against his people became so great that there was no remedy sisters and brothers we live in a culture in a time that people mock the messengers of god they despise the words of god and not only that they scoff they laugh at priests and the consecrated and that's the way people are deceived and they think everything is fine nothing can affect so this is a deception so if anyone is thinking i do remember we had a retreat i went for a retreat in martinique this is one of the french islands 
This was a retreat invited by V.A. at Pathach. This is a French missionary uh, community. They arranged this retreat. They have powerful lay preachers. And in one of the retreats, a husband and a wife, they are a young couple. They are married. They have uh, more than four children. And they are have also giving their testimonies. They, the mission is they give their testimony. They preach the word. That's the way they convert people. So this husband and wife, the husband came to give a preaching. The husband also gives testimony and the wife also gives testimony and share the word of God. So this husband, while sharing, some, he was sharing something very intimate, very uh, confidential in his life, he said to the people who were attending the retreat. This uh, brother, he said, it is after his marriage, he just got two children, he was working in a company, then there he met another girl, another girl who was working with him. So the first thing he did, he removed his uh, marriage ring to pretend that he's not married. And keeping it aside, he pretended that he's unmarried and he became smart in front of this girl whom he got attracted. Then one day he said, but at the same time, he's praying, he's part of this mission, he's a prayer warrior, but when he found this girl, his heart started to move away. And then one day she called him for a coffee. They went and they started, they stood in the hotel and they started drinking coffee. Then they took a photo. But after some time, as on his way back, nothing happened. They just took a photo. After some time, the Holy Spirit spoke to his heart. My son, you are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving your wife. You are deceiving your children. You are deceiving yourself. How long you can pretend that you are not married? Now, he decided. He prayed and he asked sorry to the Lord. He said sorry to the Lord and he decided to go and say, tell this woman that I'm already married. Sorry. Don't disturb me again. Don't look at me in any way, in any other way. So he, the next day, he prayed a lot. He went to her and he confessed to her that I am already married. I have a wife. I have two children. And he showed his family photo the first time. This girl was so upset and said, then why did you do all this drama? He said, I was weak. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. She was so upset but he said, as if, as, because nothing has happened, please release me. If you don't want, I will even leave this job and go away. This man gave the testimony. And he said, but even after I told her, though she was angry, she just released me. She became very upset with me. But I decided to stay with the Lord. But he said, but I thought, I cannot just hide it to myself. I should go and tell my wife that a weakness has come in my part. There's nothing more happened. We just had a coffee. We took a photo. I had just an attraction. I just want to confess to her so that I may be completely released by God and the Lord may use me again powerfully as his minister. And he said, he went home. His wife is also working in another office. He said, he went home and he said to his wife, I'm so sorry that Something has happened. Nothing has happened, but I was being attracted to another girl who was working with me. Uh, but I tell, told you openly because I told her I'm married and I don't want any other relationship. And now I'm not in that relationship. But as a wife, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I was cheating on you. I was deceiving you. I was trying to deceive you. And I'm sorry you have to forgive me. He said, when he shared this with his wife, his wife told him, my dear husband, I also in my workplace, I met a man and I was feeling attracted and he was also trying to tempt me. But by God's grace, I was not fallen. But I also had this serious temptation. Then he said, this brother said, he became very angry to himself. 
and he also told her i could not believe that my wife can think like that and he said that's the time i came to know when my heart tried to drift away my wife's heart also started to drift away then i came to know how selfish i am i was i had no shame to deceive my wife and at the same time i was so angry when my wife is deceiving on me sisters and brothers the devil is a deceiver he wanted to break the family see it happens when you hide the reality when you try to deceive anyone it is rolling back that's why the, the scripture is telling we should not laugh at or mock at anyone any message when the lord is telling you should not fall into any kind of deception that the wrong doers will not inherit 1 corinthians chapter 6 from 9 once again let's go through this let no one deceive us telling you can lead any kind of life you can cheat on your wife nothing will happen to you let no one deceive you this brother said the moment i started to do something immediately my wife also had the same temptation this is what shocked me fornicators are idolaters adulterers male prostitutes sodomites drunkards revilers greedy thieves robbers they cannot enter inside the kingdom of god the lord is inviting us to get out of this deception then the third one we had seen 1 corinthians 15:33 1 corinthians 15:33 now do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals let's read a word of god this is from this is 2 timothy chapter 3 from 1 1 to 5 we will read this is about this modern age that 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 sins of this time you must understand this together you can read with me you must understand this that in the last days distressing times will come for people will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boasters arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy just look at that word of god once again what is happening at this time people will be lovers of themselves there are people who live why marriages are breaking for when a wife thinks i me myself it will break down when a husband thinks only about himself i me myself it is lovers of themselves they are full time into their own business they are full time into their cell phone they are full time into social media they are full time watching tv and movies lovers of themselves lovers of money there are there are people who are workaholic all throughout they are working making money they have no value for their wife their children they are deceiving bosses arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy we continue inhuman implacable spl- slanderers profligates brutes haters of good haters of good treacherous reckless swollen with conceit lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god we read was five holding to the outward form of godliness but denying its power avoid them see the lord is telling god is telling you avoid them if you are attached to a friend who love money you will also start loving money if you start being related to a gossiper you will start gossiping if you have make friendship with a greedy man you will also become greedy if you get attached to to an adulterer you will become an adulterer the scripture is telling avoid them how did you fall in how did you become an alcoholic because you have friend circle who are alcoholics how did you start watching pornography because you have friend circle who watch it why are you addicted to certain games because you have a friend circle who are watching these particular games how are you watching all these types of movies because you have a friend they are uh, making you to fall into that that's why the scripture is telling avoid them sisters and brothers we also read now sirach chapter 9 11 and 12 many bad habits are formed through bad wrong friendship do not envy the success of sinners 
for you do not know what the end will be like sisters and brothers this is a common tendency in people envy the success of sinners the sinners who became successful if you envy them you will fall into their category for example doing any kind of unjust business doing any kind of malpractice or making any kinds of false documents or any kind of business that are sinful and if you envy them if you compare that you also want to become rich like them you will be trapped then we read verse 12 verse 12 the same chapter do not delight in what pleases the ungodly remember that they will not be held guiltless all their lives do not delight in what pleases the ungodly there are people who are happy with even producing filthy things and they can become rich producing pornographic movies and they can become rich then what will happen if you do that do if you are happy with the ungodly you will be in trouble you will be deceived this is what the lord is telling us that bad company ruins good morals it's a terrible thing there are many who have been trapped into that and the lord wants you to get out of it and the scripture is telling avoid them you know your weakness your friends also know this get out of it then again now this is fourth one galatians chapter 6 verse 3 galatians chapter 6 verse 3 galatians 6 3 let's read this word of god together for if those who are nothing think they are something they deceive themselves sisters and brothers 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 we read. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? Everything, every good thing in your life is a gift. And if you ever say it's your own hard work. There are people who say, I am a self-made man. I have reached up to this because of my hard work. They are deceiving themselves. A small virus is enough to destroy every personal achievement. That's why we have to always give glory. We read in the book of Acts of the Apostles where Herod King, Herod is being, being uh, hit to death by an angel because he boasted. There are people who have this. This is exactly the sin of pride. Those who say when they know they are nothing, they boast. It's a sin because everything is a gift. Romans chapter 9 verse 16 we read. Romans 9 16 we read. So it depends not on human will or exertion but on God who shows mercy. It depends not on hard work. Not on human exercise, not on our physical fit, uh, fitness, but on God's mercy. Again, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. St. Paul said, what was his boasting? St. Paul was telling, but by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me who is working we have daily service now it is going to be started in march it is almost nine ten months we are in this mission how can we do this regularly some of our priests they were been uh, showing such a kind of an, an appreciation they were saying how can you do it every day the answer is pure grace from God is not by human effort it is not a human uh, achievement or a human life stream it's a divine graceful in uh, intervention that's why on I worked harder than any of them though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me so the moment we accept the grace of God can work miracles 
we will make ourselves humble we say lord i am nothing without you every day after our uh, live stream whenever we have the opportunity we pray thanksgiving prayer and the prayer goes like this 10 times we pray sweet heart of jesus and the response is i am nothing without you all our team members repeat i am nothing without you because this is the truth and the reality we are nothing he is everything and it is a deception if we think with our power with our own eloquence we can do god's work it's impossible we need grace saint paul came to know then what will if it is grace we will not complain we will not be tired we will not uh, make fun of anyone or anything because it's pure grace are you deceived thinking that you are the one your parents are entrusting so many duties then you think your hard work no it's grace that's working you if you are the one doing so much god has given you so much grace then the other deception this is now the sixth one galatians 6 7 and 8 galatians 6 7 and 8 the scripture says do not be deceived god is not mocked for you reap whatever you sow if you sow to your own flesh you will reap corruption from the flesh but if you sow to the spirit you will reap eternal life from the spirit what do you sow see where there is hatred are you sowing hatred you will reap hatred are you sowing love you will reap love are you uh, sowing uh, peace you will reap peace what do you sow in your family in your workplace do you sow smile you will get back smile do you sow good things virtues you will get it back because everyone will be rewarded in accordance with their deeds we read in ezekiel this is chapter 24 verse 14 ezekiel 24 14 we read that god rewards everyone in accordance with their deeds together we read i the lord have spoken the time is coming i will act i will not refrain i will not spare i will not relent according to your ways and your doings i will judge you says the lord god our deeds are very important romans now this is uh, romans chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 romans chapter 2 6 and 7 we read for he will repay according to each one's deeds to those who are by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality he will give eternal life remember whatever you sow god is going to repay you god is going to reward you so don't look at how your children uh, respond back to you your uh, uh, wife give you back your husband is giving you back don't look at their feedback we have a god who will repay in accordance with your hard work we have a team members working all throughout the fathers cannot repay them and it will be a humiliation if we try to repay those who work hard with anything that's material because god has reserved for them glory honor immortality and eternal life no human being can give these great gifts that's why there are people who are tired of serving god tired of serving their children tired of doing housework tired of doing good because they are deceived because they are looking into human appreciation because my i live with my husband for more than 20 years he has never appreciated me he is even never smiled me he only accused me he has never done anything good he has not even bought for me a new dress or a new pair of shoes nothing devil has deceived you because you think you are doing this work for your husband no every good work that you do is directed to god and he will repay you should not be deceived there are people who stop doing good helping others because you are under deception you have a great reward god has prepared in heaven for you sisters and brothers then the sixth one james chapter 1 verse 22 james 1 22 our words and our deeds should go together but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves we always ask a question those who love god lift your hands those who love god i can see you those who love god lift your hands 
But now I have a question to ask you. How do you know you truly love God? This is 1 John 4.20. There are many who deceive themselves saying, oh, God, I love. Exactly at 5 in UK, there are people who switch on the TV. But when the husband says something, they shout at them. There are people who are very accurate in praying and uh, watching the worship, but they are upset with their children. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. They are deceivers because those who do not love a brother or sister cannot love God whom they cannot see. So it's a deception that we are deceived that you see that the live stream is going on and your husband is calling you to have a cup of coffee and you say, no, I love God. I love God. Don't disturb me. Don't bother me. You are deceiving. Stop that. Go and help your husband. Then you come back. This is a deception. We are all being deceived. Sisters and brothers, if we are not kind-hearted, charitable, and we pretend that we love God, that we worship God, no, God's love will lead us to brotherly love. Then the seventh one is James 1.26. James 1.26. Those who say that they are religious, they are spiritual, they are devoted, and they do not bridle their tongues. They do not control their tongue. One day one lady came to me for prayers. She told me, Father, can you please pray for me? I don't have anyone whom I can trust. People avoid me. I don't have any friends. I'm so lonely. There are people who make friendship, but within no time they are not coming to me. Then I just prayed and I told her, I think you are very good from head to bottom. You are a very good person, except one small organ in your body. This organ is called tongue. Everything else is good. Sisters and brothers, if you are so good in everything, you work so hard, but you cannot control your tongue, you are deceiving yourself. That's why Jesus clearly said, this is Matthew chapter 12, 35 and 36. Matthew 12, 35 and 36, Jesus said, the good person brings good things out of the good treasure. And the evil person brings evil things out of an evil treasure. I tell you, on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter. Every careless word. How many people have been destroyed because the way we speak? He wants us to control our tongue. Otherwise, we are deceiving. Even now, you have a problem of arguing or justifying. You are deceived. Then the final one, 1 John 1, 8 that is, if we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves. If we say that we have no sin, we are all sinners. Even the one I who preach, I am the first and the foremost sinner. Sisters and brothers, we need to repent. And the Lord is going to open a new way for us.